Welcome back to Lord Winkle Bottom Investigates. We have things to do, a lot of things, and uh, what I want to do first is getting up there and use that coin on that machine. <laughs> Without a coin, we can't use. I do have a coin for science. I'll just pop this in here and... It's working. It's working. Let me see that at all. I say, there's a there's a nude fellow in a bath. You know, he, he looks somewhat familiar. Hey, it's the priest. Of course. <laughs> we don't even know if he's nude. I... Well... Uh... Well, I'll be jiggered. Perhaps we should endeavour to never watch that again. <laughs> Ever. Yes, yeah, quite quite so old thing, quite quite so. Okay. He has an alarming past. Because he took a bath? How weird. A machine that apparently sh Huh. Okay, not what I expected, but hey, if that is alarming, you do you, I suppose. <laughs> Let's uh, now do the autopsy, shall we? Mm, not in the study, though, because I think we can. Right? We have everything. We have the needle and thread. He has the apron. A hammer. A uh, knife, not a hammer. Right then, I suppose you'll need to perform this autopsy. Let me take the needle and thread and I'll get on with it. Right, I'll just get ready. <laughs> Kiss the cook. <laughs> I'm not really sure about this apron. Oh well, here we go then. Goodness gracious. Is that it? Yeah, it's all done. He was murdered, all right. Salt water poisoning. Somebody must have tainted the water in his pipe network. And salt water would kill him? Yes, he's a freshwater animal. Couldn't survive in salt. Can you estimate the time of death? Poor chap probably only died shortly before the maid found him, but the salt could have been put into the system hours earlier. There's no way to know when the killer struck. So we know how he was killed, but not when. Uh, that makes it hard to nail down a suspect. If it could have been done at any time, anybody could have done it. Blast! Time for a bit of detective work then. Talk to suspects, fill up the old notebook, what? Indeed. There's a villain on this island, and it's up to us to bring him, or her, to justice. Come, Frumple, the game is a hoof. <laughs> okay. So he sued him right back up. Yeah, yeah. Poor Guilty. Looks good. How sad he should end up like this. Okay. Now we know what we knew already. Can I still touch him? I think we've learned all we can from the poor chap. Yeah, okay, good. Good. Oh, it's the story. It's the first. <laughs> I want you to look at the apron. Okay. Okay. Well, that didn't help too much, did it? We could confront the pastor. But we still, we need the code. Uh, the code for the safe. Uh, and we need to somehow a dust sheet. A large white sheet. Where did we get that from? A large white... This seems unlikely. <laughs> oh, the packing tape. I'll use the tape when I connect something else to this. Oh, okay. The tape. Have a gunpowder. Let's now see if there are new options. Turning to the incident, then. Are you aware of anybody who might have had a grudge against Gilfrey? Well, my lord, Pumphrey seemed most vexed of late. So 
Teddy overheard the master discuss him getting rid of somebody on the telephone. He thought it was him because of an incident in the vegetable garden. But I'm sure it wasn't. I can't think what he overheard. Mm -hmm. Please tell we us in that. detail what you know about the incident. Well, my lord, as you know, I discovered the master dead a short while before you arrived. The other guests were here, and I've been helping them to their rooms. I went to find the master, and there he was. Dead. Oh, very horrible. And you didn't see anything strange before that? Well, at the time, I thought it odd that Ambrose wasn't helping with the guests. Oh, but I never dreamed he'd been locked up there in the attic all that time. Hmm. So Ambrose was already locked. Thank you, in... Ms. Clutterbuck. when he got killed. No, talk about it. I suppose now we know why this salt is down here. Question is, Finally. who brought it here and to what end? Oh, that's easy. It was the killer. And they brought it to poison Gilfrey. Very insightful, Frumpel. Thank you. <laughs> we have traces. There's some salt. No hoof prints or anything. Paw prints. Slime trails. <laughs> Nothing. Okay. Always check the fridge. Can we talk to Umbros now? Oh, right. And he is still lying there. Oh, oh. Look at that. about how you got trapped in the attic. Well, sure, it was like this. I was in the attic, sorting through a few of the master's belongings. It's awful messy up there, so I've taken it upon myself to do a spot of spring cleaning. Go on. Well, sure, while I was tidying, somebody else came in and started rooting through the boxes. It's dark up there, so they didn't notice me at first. Who was it? Well, alas, that I can't tell you, sir. Much as they didn't see me, I couldn't see very much of them. Most unfortunate. Anyway, I, I must have made a sound because I startled them. I tried to give chase, but they ran out the door, slamming it shut. Must have done some damage because it got jammed. The rotter locked the door at the bottom of the stairs, too. I suppose they must have thought old Ambrose here saw them and wanted to keep him out of the way, at least for a short while. But what were they looking for, I wonder? Hmm. Ambrose, I regret to inform you that your master is deceased. I, I I know, sir. Ms. Clutterbuck was kind enough to break the news to me. Do you have any idea who the rotter might be? Alas, no, sir. My master was a kind soul. It's hard to imagine anybody wishing him harm. Hmm. Thank you, Ambrose. That didn't help at all. I say, I didn't notice these before. They must have got disturbed with all the comings and goings in here. Let me see. Huh. There are a load of hoof-written letters. Look like pretty soppy stuff to me. My dearest A, blah blah, secret love, blah blah, BC. Who's BC? Well, we know a B at least. Hmm, these letters seem a touch one-sided, and if they are from who I suspect, then it looks like they weren't ever actually given to A. Ambrose? Wait, what was it? Unlikely to be a suspect? AP? BC. So, Beryl Clutterbuck. It's her bed. That fits. She wrote love letters to Ambrose? But never gave it to him? Is there another A? Does not seem so. Huh. Interesting. Well, he seems dead to the world. How does he... Poor fellow is knackered. He'll be right as rain after a bit of rest, but... Okay. Cannot talk to him at all. Hmm. Can I take that? I say, I didn't notice these before. But... Let me see. Huh. There are a load of hoofs My dearest Ambrose, like secret love. My dearest A. Eh? Well, we know a B at least. Hmm, these letters seem a touch one-sided, and they... Okay. Does he know about that? No. 
Thank you, Amber. Maybe we can confront her with the letters. Yeah. This uh, might be a touch awkward, but we discovered some letters under your bed. Oh! Oh. My lord, uh, you didn't read them, did you? And how? So you're B then. And I take it old Aristotle Guilfrey was A. Oh. oh, my lord, I, I didn't mean anybody to see those letters. They're just a silly old goat's idle fantasy. The master was kind, but never showed me any interest. And you wished him to? More than anything, my lord. But it wasn't his way. He was still devoted to the mistress, and nobody would have changed that. Especially not somebody like me, I suppose. So it's not Ambrose. Turning to the incident. <laughs> Miss Clutterbuck, it strikes me you might have had a somewhat uneasy relationship with the victim. Oh no, sir. The master was very kind to me. Not as kind as you'd have liked there. <gasps> I suppose I can't blame him. A person in his position couldn't be seen with somebody like me. It just wouldn't be proper. Well, quite so. I fancy I might have resented him for it a bit. Oh, my lord. If only things had been different. Did you ever discuss this with him? Perhaps he might have felt the same way you did. Oh my lord. I, I just couldn't. Oh, the shame of it. Hmm. Thank you, Miss Clutterbuck. So she loved him. In secret, though. She never confessed it to him. <laughs> Should we just... Tell him, hey, we found your nudes. I mean, why not, right? We still need that code. I say, look at this old boy. It's not for me. You couldn't. Have... And uh, we do have already three hints. Where we met, where we got engaged, where we married, where Constance was born. Dang, do we have written that down? I didn't, and I don't remember. What we found out already. A photograph of Constance just after she was born. Damn. <laughs> um. Yeah, secretly loved him. Good by salt. Hmm. Madam? Oh, about the incident. How well did you know, Gilfrey? Aristotle, not well. I knew dear Ethelberta for many years, almost since I was a Crea. I remember she was so excited when Aristotle proposed to her. He always seemed such a kind soul. Then you don't know why anyone would have done him in. Gracious, no. Uh, please find out what caused this terrible tragedy, Lord Winklebottom. I fear his soul will not rest until you do. What do you know about the incident? I have tried to speak to the spirits, but there is a veil over these events. All is cloudy to me. A load of rot. Rumple, do be polite. Oh, maybe you're right, Doctor. Recently, I find myself wondering if my powers are real after all. Perhaps it's all in my head. You're doubting your abilities. I might not be the only one. Think about it. An animal of science brought me here. Maybe he didn't believe either. Maybe... He planned to put me to the test. If he did, I don't know that I would have passed. Hmm. You knew Ethelberta quite well, I believe. Oh, yes. She was a dear, dear friend to me. I wonder, do you know anything about the circumstances of their matrimony? Alas, I was unable to attend their wedding as I was on a two-year-long spiritual retreat. I left shortly after their engagement. I'm not even sure where they wed in the end. They travelled the globe together, so it could have been anywhere. Do you know where they were when they got engaged? Oh, indeed I do. It was on one of their expeditions somewhere in South America. 
She was so excited. Ah, okay, so that's the engagement. Thank you for your time, madam. Engagement South America. Now, about the incident. What can you tell us about Gilfrey? I don't know him at all. No idea why he invited me. Truth be told, when I saw that journalist, my blood ran cold. Why? A lady has secrets, darling. Things she might want to keep away from her adoring public. I was worried Gilfrey might have discovered something about me and was planning on sharing it with the world. Huh. Do you know anything about what happened? It's unlikely. Not a thing, darling. I hid away in here when I arrived. It gets so tiresome being in public, you know. So many questions, demands for autographs and all that. Well, since you mention it, I, I have a piece of paper here. Maybe you could... Rumpole, this is not the time. <laughs> so that's what she wants Farewell, then, it Celia. to be. She wants to be in the spotlight. But I don't think it's about her. Can I finally take that? Maybe I'll... Why? Wanna stick it? <laughs> I took it! I believe these are used to see into the future. Rather a pity they can't see into the... No, yeah, boy. Okay, oh, that's then the same. Probably sh okay, very good, very good. We got something out of that. A roaring hot fire. Okay. I think you here. So, yeah, let's talk to people and uh, see what we can learn from that. Oh, no one was here. Behind it there is the safe. Ooh, I say. I've never understood why mold bunch of exhibition. I think, right? Can I now take that? I don't really think this diving. I can use this packing tape to attach the bars to the helmet. What? <laughs> no freaking way! This seems un. Okay, that's funny. Now let's uh, talk to her. Let's talk to him. Reverend, could we talk about the incident? What can you tell us about the incident last night? Alas, not a jot. I arrived here and went to my room for some peace and quiet before the big event. By the time I came down, poor Gilfrey had already passed. You saw nothing unusual. I wish I could help you, but no, I'm afraid I did not. <laughs> ah, Reverend, there's something rather delicate I wish to discuss with you. <laughs> Quiet, Frumpel. What is it, my son? Well, uh, that is to say... <laughs> You're in a dirty movie. <gasps> ah, bugger. I just knew it would come out at some point. You don't deny it. Would that I could, but no. I feared Gilfrey had discovered my secret. I suppose that's why we're all here. So he can reveal the terrible truth to the world. Surely not. Gilfrey wouldn't do something like that. And why shouldn't he? Maybe he felt that it was the right thing to do, or maybe he was going to ask for money to keep my secret. In any event, perhaps I should be punished for my sordid past. I needed the money, you see. I was young and foolish. Ah, uh, the old church roof again. Couldn't you run a tombola or something? I hadn't taken up the cloth then, you understand. In fact, in many regards, this is my way of atoning for that sin. Well, don't worry, Reverend. Your secret is safe with us. How oh, is it? That's a shame. It's a blasted funny story. <laughs> it is, and there's no shame in bathing. Come on. Well, goodbye How for now, Reverend. How could that be a sin? God be with you, my son. <laughs> I don't understand that. It's weird. Oh. Okay. Oh, he didn't know anything about the marriage, right? Oh, wait, Reverend, is there something we... new now? Oh, yeah. I wonder if we could discuss what you were doing last night. Why? Whatever do you mean? Well, we found your prayer book on the stairs of the attic. The same attic where Ambrose disturbed someone got himself shut in. You can't think I would do such a thing. I'm an animal of God, Winklebottom. I would never. 
And yet, we found something up there that was of great interest to you, as you know. All right. I admit, I was trying to find that wretched machine. I thought I could destroy it and save my good name, but I heard somebody coming up the hall stairs, so I darted out of there and hid in the study. I suppose I dropped my book then. So you never actually went into the attic? No, I swear I didn't. And I certainly didn't harm poor Aristotle. Thank you, Reverend. That'll be all for now. I wonder what... or... what god he serves. I mean... Well, goodbye for now. God be with you, man. <laughs> what kind of animal would their god be? <laughs> Still just a puddle of slime. Hi, Mr. Pumphrey. Yeah. I say, you don't think this had anything to do- Oh, I don't- <laughs> If we could talk about the incident for a moment. What can you tell us about Guilfrey's death? Nothing, I'm afraid. I wasn't in the mansion at the time. I live elsewhere on the island. I prefer the solitude. It allows me to focus on my work. Where does she live? In the light tower? How was your relationship with Gilfrey? I was very grateful to him for offering me work. Many people aren't quite so open-minded, you know. You don't know of anybody who would wish him harm? Not at all. He wasn't exactly outgoing, at least in the time I knew him. But you got along with him well. As well as could be expected. Like most people, he underestimated me. I'm capable of far more than the work he allowed me to do, Mr. Winklebottom. But I'm used to being underappreciated. Because you're a, a, you know. Indeed. Not the sort of work a woman is supposed to do, don't you know? I have to work twice as hard as the others for a quarter of the recognition. Most frustrating, I'm sure. And on top of that, I can't even get a lab coat my size with pockets in it. It's just infuriating. <laughs> She's right. That's horrible. No. Thank you, Miss Price. Where we met, where we got engaged, where we married, where Constance yeah. was born. We don't know where she was born and where they married. So, let's get outside. Perhaps we should discuss the incident. Do you have any idea who would want to kill poor Gilfrey? Not a clue, old thing. Not a clue. He had no legal problems? Nothing that could suggest a motive? Nothing that I knew about, and I would have known. How about the old will? There's always a big kerfuffle about the will in cases like this, at least in my experience. Mm, nothing out of the ordinary. With his wife dead, just about everything goes to Constance. Just about everything? Oh, there was an amount set aside for the staff, to ensure they were well looked after. Not enough to kill for, though. Hmm. And what can you tell us about what happened to Gilfrey? Hard to say, old thing. I mean, there was no shortage of folks coming and going, so it really could have been anybody. Quite the collection of characters, I think you'll agree. You don't know anybody else here? Not one of them. I've known Gilfrey for years, but not socially. I just dealt with his legal matters. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Spode. Then I think we... talk to Constance? She must know where she was born, right? Oh, it's closed. No, it's not. <laughs> Is there, maybe? Oh, was there a hint? No. Ethelberta's grave. You can tell how much you revered her. Don't much fancy being buried myself. Shoved into a tiny wooden box. Okay. Yeah, the family. Perhaps we could discuss your family. Could that have what been? can you tell us about your mother? Mother and I were great pals, Lord Winklebottom. We had such love. I was so very sorry to. The house wasn't the same after that. I had to get. Dreadful business. Just... Hmm. Had you seen your father recently? No, not for some time. Do you 
you know much about how your parents met or why they were married? Uh, not a great deal, I'm afraid. I know they met on one of my father's expeditions in Africa, but not much beyond that. What about their wedding or your own birth? I can't help you, Lord Winklebottom. They moved around so much, you see, and, and had so many stories. You know? Okay. She doesn't know. Thank you, miss. Farewell, Miss Gil. We don't ask her about the incident? This seems unlikely. Hmm. The photograph of Constance. Just what do we do with the photograph? If we could discuss the incident last night. Do you know anything about the circumstances of Gilfrey's death? Not a jot, old thing. I mean, any one of us could have done it, couldn't we? People coming and going for this big event. I say, it could even have been you. Or Dr. F here. How dare you, sir? I'm a doctor. I would never. Steady on, old thing. He was just making a point. I mean, we haven't even been there. How well did you know Admiral Gilfrey? <laughs> never met the fellow. I mean, Connie has talked about him, of course, but we never actually met. So you don't know who might have wanted to kill him? Not a clue, old thing. Isn't it usually a family thing? Inheritance and all that. Alas, his only family is poor Miss Gilfrey. And you, once you're married, of course. Right, yes, I suppose so. If he'd allowed the marriage, of course. <laughs> I don't think the old boy approved of me, truth be told. Like my own family, I suppose. I say... You're not suggesting we had anything to do with this, are you? I'm not suggesting anything at the moment, sir. Mr. Spode mentioned Constance's inheritance. It would be rather substantial, I believe. Oh, rather. I mean, jolly rotten luck and all, but she'll be a rich woman now. And you a rich man, if you're to marry her. <gasps> I say, well, that's a fine thing, isn't it? Dashed rude of you, old thing. What exactly are you suggesting? I'm not suggesting anything, just pointing out the facts. Well, you can get that idea out of your head right away. The nerve of you, I mean, really, is just too much. Hmm. Thank you, sir. Okay. Can't do anything here. Then, in that case... We try to talk to that, what was it, that somebody who lives in the lake. <laughs> Can we now get there? This helmet fits, but there's nothing feeding air into it. I'll need some way to pipe air into it from the ship. Air from the ship? How do we do that? <laughs> Does cheat. Notes about the times the best. All the load of bloody. My dearest Ethelberta, a reminder that should you. Fellow has a safe then. <laughs> I rather suspect that was the point. Anyway. Huh. I say. I suspect it leads down to the engine. Oh no, quite so. Uh, probably. Okay, they still don't go down there because of the red line. I thought maybe I could get rid of it. I'm not really. <laughs> we could blow it really away. I don't think I need to hear that tune again. <laughs> Me neither. Huh. How do we deal with that? We do have gunpowder. We cannot just stick our head this in there. This water is far too deep to wade yeah. in. Will we? Okay. Hmm. So we're still missing oxygen. Need a pump. How do we get a pump? Or where from? Hmm. 
Hold on a moment, Frumple. Let's take stock. I'm rather afraid we're not getting anywhere with this investigation. Does seem like a bit of a tricky one even for you. We have plenty of suspects, but little proof. Quite. We seem to have got everything we can out of interrogating people, but still no closer to knowing who did it. It's so infuriating. Pity old Gilfrey didn't let you know in advance what his plans were. Might have given us a clue as to why someone was so intent on stopping him. We just lost touch over the years. He was busy with research, me with my work, and now it's too late. I should have made more of an effort. Steady on, old chap. You weren't to know. That's just how life is sometimes. I just need to solve this case. Catch the fiend who murdered my friend. I say, what if we could get the Rosser to expose themselves somehow? Yes, but how? Oh, but wait a moment. Yes, it, it could just work. Madame Lavinia, she's the key. If she could summon Gilfrey's spirit, he could name the murderer. Um, well, I don't want to burst your bubble, old thing, but, well, that's a load of old tosh, isn't it? There's no such thing as ghosts and spirits. Honestly, Winklebottom, you confound me at times. Of course, we know it's nonsense, but the killer may not. If we can make it look authentic, a seance might cause the killer to reveal himself. If he thinks old Gilfrey's about to finger him, he'd have to escape, or else own up before he was accused. So all we have to do is fake a seance and wait for the killer to react. Genius. Or insanity. Honestly, I'm not sure which. Perhaps both, my friend. Right, we should talk to our friendly medium about this. Mm-hmm. So because we talked to everybody, they now did that recap. But I still wonder... Where we met, where we got This engaged. is the combination for the box, but what's with the safe? I don't remember. So where we met, Africa. Uh, where they engaged in South America. Then, were they married? Yeah, there are too many options. On the South Pole. Australia. And where she got born. I don't know. Nope, that's you not know, it. You know, I'm not sure we have all the info. <laughs> huh. Uh, no. What's with that picture? I cannot really look at it. This seems unlike Okay. Maybe I have to cut it open? This seems un with with the screwdriver. With so that we can look uh, no. on its back. I'd really rather not. Why do we have a dust sheet? No, I... And what do we want to blow up? Uh, no. Huh. From what I've read, this stuff might... I once knew a chap who was killed. Okay. Can we use that as a host? So I might to... have a use for this after all. Yeah. For the air. A bit more of tape and I now have a helmet that both fits and allows me to breathe. Okay, cool. Well, now we have a hint. And uh, I think before we talk to um, Lavinia, what's her name, right? Where's the... Yeah. Uh, we do go and try to dive into the lake because that's very exciting. I'm very curious about that creature. And we might get some crucial information there. So let's go there. But we will do that in the next episode. Thank you so so much for watching this one. Have a wonderful and adventurous day and goodbye.